Number 17. Determine the oxidation states of the elements in the compounds listed, and none of the oxygen-containing compounds are peroxides or superoxides. And then we have letter D here, KNO3, so potassium nitrite. We need to figure out what the oxidation states are, aka the charges, of each individual element in KNO2. If I said KNO3 earlier, I apologize. It's KNO2, potassium nitrate. So, best thing to do for oxidation states is to memorize your trend, okay? The periodic table has tons of trends, you know, already built into it. So, this is just one of the many trends that you have to memorize. Your oxidation state trend, okay? We talked about this a little bit in depth in the question 16a so if you want to check that number out on the playlist you can but just know that for majority of the time the charges of the group will be the same charge so group one generally will have a plus one charge it will lose that's what plus means lose one electron when it becomes a compound group two plus two it uh gain uh it lost two electrons and then this trend as well. So you'll start getting into negatives on the right side, which means that you gained electrons. Okay, so we need to find out the oxidation states for K, N, O, 2. Now, this one is a very special case because there are three different elements here. Usually when there's three or more elements, we're going to solve the oxidation states using algebra. You don't have to do it this way, but I find that it's the easiest way. And the key, or majority of the time, is that you probably will know all of the elements on the outside, what their charges are. The one in the middle is probably the one that you're going to need to solve for. The one in the middle usually has multiple oxidation states. Not all the time though, but majority of the time. So now, let's see. I have potassium, right? I have a nitrogen, and I have oxygen. Now, technically, this compound, right, all the charges in the compound always has to equal the total charge. So the sum of all the charges, right, and how many there are of each, should equal the total charge. Now, where is the total charge on this compound, right? Where is the total charge up here? The total charge is always in the upper right-hand corner. So it would be somewhere over here. And for what they actually gave you, it would be in the upper right-hand corner. But for both of them, I don't see any number, right? So what number is it equal to? This is neutral. So there's not a positive nor a negative number. So this would be equal to zero on both of them. And that's what the total charge for this guy is. It has to be equal to zero because they didn't tell you uh, any charge. You assume that it's zero. It's neutral. Okay, so now for each element, for potassium, nitrogen, and oxygen, you just need to tally up how many you have of each and the oxidation state. I'm just going to put ox state. So two things you need to know for each element. So, let's just talk about how many we have. In KNO2, how many Ks were here? Well, there was no subscript down here, right? So, it's just one, right? So, I have one potassium. How many nitrogens? Well, once again, I don't have a subscript down here, so that's a one. So, I have one nitrogen. And then how many oxygens do I have? Ah, there is a two here, right? So, that tells me that I have two oxygens. And now let's do our oxidation states. Now, potassium is in group one. Potassium is always going to have a plus one charge. It's in group one. So I'm going to put plus one here. Let's go to the other end of the spectrum, oxygen, right? They did say that none of the oxygen-containing compounds are peroxides or superoxides. So if that's the case... 
oxygen will always have a negative two charge. It follows its trend, mainly because oxygen is so electronegative. So it's going to want to follow the trend that's given. So in this case, oxygen will want to be a negative two charge. It will lose, uh, sorry, it will gain two electrons. But now the one in the middle, uh, it might follow the trend, right? But it might not. So let's just see what it is. I don't know what it is at the moment, so I'm going to use algebra to get it, right? I'm going to label this as x. Whichever one that you don't know, you're always going to label it as x. And now what you're going to do is you're going to multiply what you know of each element. So you will multiply how many potassiums you have times the oxidation state. So one times a plus one is just a one. For nitrogen, it's one times X, which is X, right? And then for oxygen, it's two times a negative two. So that's a negative four. And remember that equals the total charge. The total charge in this case was a zero, right? And you always add everything up. So it would be one plus X plus a negative four, which basically is just a negative four. So now I have this lovely formula, right? One plus X minus four equals zero. Well, I could do one minus four, and that would give me a negative three. So let's just do that. And then we'll get rid of this. And then just solve for X, right? Instead of minus three, I'll do plus three on both sides. And that gives me X equals a plus three. And that was nitrogen's charge. So in this case, it actually didn't go by the trend. Sometimes they're not going to go by the trend. So you have to solve with algebra. So this is nitrogen's charge. So now what are all of the oxidation states? Well, potassium, we said, was from the chart. It was a plus one. That means that it lost one electron. Oxygen followed the trend. It was a negative two. Negatives mean gain. You gain two electrons. And I'm just putting E negative as electron. And then last but not least, nitrogen, which was the one that didn't uh, follow the trend. That one was a plus three. It lost uh, three electrons. And there you go. Whee! There are all of your oxidation states, potassium, oxygen, and nitrogen. And that's it. So, guys, what do you think? Let me know in the comments. If this helped you, give it a like or a thumbs up or whatever. You know, smash the subscribe button if you want to. Thank you. Um, but other than that, I, I really hope that I'm helping you guys out in your chem class. And if you have, uh, if you're in physics or math at the moment, we also have questions for those if you want to check out our playlist for that. Uh, that would be awesome. But either way. I hope you have a great day, and I will see you guys all in the next lesson. Bye-bye.